Hello, this is Jay Lewis, and welcome to the Old Radio Companion. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden. Kraft presents The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> yeah. Johnson Wax Program with Silver McGee and Molly. Hello, everyone, and welcome to, yes, another show of The Old Radio Companion. I just saw the other day that I have some listeners outside the United States, and so I wanted to say a warm welcome and hello to all my other listeners in other countries. I appreciate you tuning in and listening. In most parts of the country now, all the kids are going back to school, so I thought it would be fun to talk about something that's probably familiar with most kids, and even the college-aged, and that is the school mascot. And the school that I grew up with it was the Panthers. School mascots are synonymous with school games and cheerleaders and routing your, rooting your school on and having that school spirit. Well, I came across on the internet a listing to the most unusual and strange school mascots. Uh, they made me laugh uh, at some of them, and some of them are a little bizarre and unusual, and I wanted to share them with you. I just couldn't keep them to myself. I knew that all of you were listening to my show and have learned the subject matter that I like to talk about and laugh about. Well, you get it. So here's a few of the strangest school mascots, and it's hard to believe that these actually are real. The first one is from Evergreen State College, and the mascot is called Speedy the Geoduck. So if some of you don't know what a geoduck is, and it's not a name of a hybrid car, and it's not a duck that wants to save the planet. It's actually a large mollusk. It's a clam, and it has a long body coming out of this big shell. And actually, a geoduck is a clam that burrows in the sand, and they're actually the largest of the species. So the mascot Speedy, he runs around as basically a dancing clam with a giant shell on its body. And so I think it's called Speedy because they dig into the sand uh, really fast. So when Speedy runs around at games, he basically has this giant shell, this green protruding body that comes out of his head. And the funny part about the mascot is that they also have a song <laughs> that is sung um, when games are going on. And I don't know the tune of it, but the words are siphon high, squirt it out, swivel all about, uh, let it all hang out. <laughs> Okay, well, I would love to see Speedy in action, and not sure how ominous it is or would scare the other team, but, you know, it's funny in the least. The second one I have is from the University of California in Santa Cruz, and it's called, their mascot is called Sammy the Banana Slug. So if you don't live in a place where you've ever seen a banana slug, then you're in for a treat. Uh, when you live in the Pacific Northwest like I do, uh, we see a lot of banana slugs uh, here. And yes, they're big, and they do resemble sometimes a giant banana. And so um, the college is known for its laid-back style, and I guess it's appropriate that they would pick the banana slug. Although I don't know how appropriate it is to have him dancing around when there's a game like football where speed is promoted. You know, we're going to beat you. We're so fast. Uh, we're like uh, banana slugs. Well, banana slugs, like any slug, yeah, they're not known for their speed. It takes them hours just to get across the sidewalk. But, And also, I guess Sammy is somewhat famous. Um, in 1992, he appeared in the Sports Illustrated magazine. Uh, he was named as one of the top college mascots. So go Sammy, the banana slug. The third one is uh, from Scottsdale Community College. <clears throat> And their mascot is called Artie the Fighting Artichoke. An artichoke that fights. Well, I know when I eat artichokes, um, I'm fighting something else. So maybe you can figure that out. Anyway, so it's an interesting history behind how Artie became the Scottsdale School mascot. So I guess the mascot was uh, was come up on purpose. Uh, they came up on purpose because the students picked the most ridiculous mascot form that they could think of. And it was actually in protest because they found out that the administration in the college was using scholarship money 
that was intended for Native American students. They used it instead to bribe athletes to come to the school. Well, I don't know about you, but if I was going to protest, I think I could, you know, come up with something a little more ridiculous, you know, maybe like Sydney the sewer pipe or Timmy the toilet or, I don't know, Vicky the vomit, Dougie the dog poop, you know, you get it, uh, you know. But anyway, they came up with Artie the fighting artichoke. Number four, from North, North Carolina School of Arts, uh, along with the fighting artichoke, uh, Artie, is the fighting pickle. So when you think of fights and being tough, uh, well, I don't know if uh, the first thing is is a giant gherkin attack, but cucumbers that are pickled and aged doesn't come to my mind as being tough. Uh, maybe, you know, cool as a cucumber, you know, things like that. Well, the school in North Carolina doesn't think so. Yes, their giant pickle mascot comes out fighting and dancing and running around. The giant green costume with its gaping teeth. Uh, the area doesn't actually have anything to do with producing pickles. I guess they just like pickles. The last one is from Dartmouth College, uh, Keggy the Keg. You can kind of guess <laughs> what this one's about. It's actually the mascot, uh, but called, it's actually the unofficial mascot uh, of the college, but it's one that the college recognizes the students recognize uh, the administration refuses to endorse it or accept it, you know, for obvious reasons. The dancing keg of beer with his big bulging eyes and big smile. Uh, I mean, you know, come on, he's happy. He's a beer keg. But the students, however, get excited with games and events and they await for his arrival with enthusiasm. So, yes, nothing gives school spirit and drive uh, like excessive beer drinking. So there you go. Keggy the keg. Well, now it's time for our sponsor from the past. This is the coffee pot at work. Listen to it perk. Look at the coffee as it gets darker and stronger. Smell the honest coffee smell. Ah, smell it. But will this cup of coffee taste as good as it smells? You bet it will because it's Maxwell House, the coffee that tastes as good as it smells every time. Maxwell House coffee tastes as good as it smells every time. If you like to look at good coffee, listen to good coffee, smell good coffee, and taste good coffee, brew Maxwell House, the coffee that tastes as good as it smells every time. Maxwell House is good to the last drop. It tastes as good as it smells every time. Maxwell House. Okay, folks, today's show is from the Baby Snook Show. Um, I thought it would be appropriate since the kids are all going back to school to kind of have a going back to school theme. And so if you've listened to one of our other shows where we featured Baby Snooks, you will know it's funny and amazing how the actress voice of Fanny Bryce, who plays Snooks, can actually do the voice. She sounds like a little girl. The series began on CBS Radio on September 17th, 1944, and it was a long-running show, starring Fanny Bryce playing Snooks and getting herself into trouble, and the daddy played by Hanley Safford, who does an excellent job portraying Snooks' stressed-out, often angry father. Uh, it all started as an auto, um, vaudeville act, and it turned into an old radio staple and just a very funny show. So the show we're going to uh, play today is titled Report Card, which originally aired April 20th, 1951. Very funny show. And one of the things I um, want to point out that you might want to listen to uh, is at the very end when Fanny Bryce is talking to Don Wilson, who also does announcements for different radio shows but was more famous uh famously recognized for the announcer for the jack benny uh, show but at the very end listen for the bloopers uh that uh take place at the end of the show so anyway here is baby snooks report card enjoy the show the baby snooks show Starring Fanny Bryce as Baby Snooks with Hanley Stafford as Daddy and brought to you by Tums. My Daddy loves them. Does acid indigestion and heartburn hit you after your juice and coffee in the morning? 
Well, just eat a couple of Tums and see how Tums sweeten your stomach almost instantly. You feel better fast. A couple of Tums after lunch and after dinner let you enjoy your food without fear of acid indigestion and heartburn. Get Tums tonight and always keep them handy. T-U-M-S, Tums for the tummy, guaranteed to contain no soda. Still only 10 cents a roll, three-roll package, a quarter everywhere. And now to Sycamore Terrace and the Higgins family. Well, to adults, the first of the month usually means bills. But to children, it's even worse. It means report cards. So now, let's go to the fourth grade of the Sycamore Grammar School, where the teacher, Miss Teasdale, is passing out the bad news. Yes, Harvey, you did very well this month. And now I come to Snooks Higgins. Snooks? Yes, Miss Teasdale. <laughs> Do you see this card I'm holding in my hand? Yes. Do you know what it is? The ace of spades? No. <laughs> the seven no. of clubs? No. It's your report card. And just listen to these marks. Spelling, 40. Arithmetic, 40. And how do you account for this one? History, 10. I guess I've been spending too much time on spelling and arithmetic. <laughs> Snooks, these marks are abominable. And to think that one of my pupils should make such a horrible showing. Oh, I'm so ashamed. Well, don't expect any sympathy from me. <laughs> Snooks, don't you dare be pertinent. If anyone should be ashamed, it's you. Your report card sets a new record for low marks for the entire school year. I set a new record? Yes. Gee, and I wasn't even trying. <laughs> Snooks, I've wasted enough time with you. I have other pupils, you know. Now, you just take this report card home and see that your father signs it. But he'll spank me. Well, perhaps you deserve it. I'm afraid to show it to him. You'll just have to face the situation. I don't mind facing the situation, but he makes me back into it. Snooks, <laughs> I want that report card back here tomorrow morning signed by your father. Now, we'll hear no more about it. All right. Vera, it's very important that the dinner be perfect tomorrow night for Mr. and Mrs. Weemish. Well, what's so important? We've had them here before for dinner. Well, the firm's opening a new plant, and I'm hoping to be the manager of it. If we give them a good dinner, maybe he'll become expansive and offer me the job. Well, I'm having turkey. Fine. Cranberry sauce. Good. And I think I'll make some of those dumplings like my mother makes. Your mother's dumplings? Yes, they'll expand anybody. Uh, <laughs> oh, is that so? My mother's dumplings are wonderful. What's wrong with her dumplings? They're just like your mother. Heavy, lumpy, and don't agree with anybody. <laughs> and just when you think you've got the thing settled, they start talking back. <laughs> Lancelot, my mother happens to be a very fine cook, and you know very well she used to run a restaurant. Yes, I remember it very well. It was the only restaurant whose cooking was listed by Duncan Hines as subversive. <laughs> very funny. It's true. Believe me, your mother's food was dedicated to the overthrow of the American stomach by force and violence. <laughs> All right, I won't make dumplings. I'll make my own special biscuits. Oh, you will? Really? Your own special biscuits? Yes. Oh, Vera? Yeah? Make dumplings. <laughs> now, let's see. With turkey, I think a white wine would be good. After... Daddy! Please, I'm busy. But, Daddy, this is important. Look... I'm planning a dinner for my boss and his wife. Later. But I want you to do this now. You always have to bother me. Look, is it something you can do yourself? Well, I guess so. Then do it yourself. <laughs> but, Daddy... Do it yourself. Well, all right. If you say so... I do say so. Well, if he wants me to do it myself... Mm-hmm... <laughs> Lancelot Higgins. There, my report card is all signed. Snooks Higgins. Yes, Miss Teasdale. 
About this report card of yours. You've signed your father's name to it, haven't you? Sure. Now can you lie like... Did you say sure? Sure. <laughs> you mean... You mean you admit that you signed your father's name to your report card? Mm -hmm. Why, that's forgery, Snooks. You can go to jail for it. Now, why did you do it? I can go to jail for it? Yes. <laughs> now, answer the question. I refuse to answer on the ground that it might incriminate me. <laughs> Snooks, you answer the question or I'll have you held in contempt of school. I mean, oh, now you're making me do it. Now, come on, Snooks, unless you want me to drag you down to the principal, you tell me why you forged your father's name to that report card. Well, he told me to. He made me. He made you? I don't believe it. It's true. He was busy planning dinner for his boss. Oh, poppycock. <coughs> no, turkey. <laughs> I mean, it's a lie. No parents lets his child sign his name to the report card. Well, he did, and he didn't even look at it. Snooks, you're lying. And I'm bringing this to your parents' attention at once. Now, you come with me. I demand to see my lawyer. Oh! <laughs> come on! I can't believe it, Lancelot. Miss Teasdale says Snooks forged your name to her report card. That little delinquent. Where in the world would she get an idea like that? But then what can I expect with the family she comes from? Your side, of course. Well, my side? Now, just stop that. Oh, Vera, are you ignoring the fact that some years ago your brother was put in jail for selling surplus war materials? Well, it was unfair. Lots of people sold surplus war materials. Yes, but not while the war was still on. <laughs> Right, so Louis was the one exception in the family. The one exception? How about your Aunt Mabel, the shoplifter? <laughs> She'll steal anything. Aunt Mabel is not a shoplifter. She's a kleptomaniac. <laughs> it's a disease with the poor woman. She's been going to a psychiatrist to find out where she got it. Well, I don't know where she got it, but I guarantee she stole it. <laughs> anyway, I'm glad she's going to a psychiatrist. Well, she's not going anymore. The psychiatrist discharged her. Oh, then she's cured? No, he got sore when he discovered his couch was missing. <laughs> but look, let's stop this. Snooks is the problem, and you'd better have a talk with her right away. A fine time with a weemish she's coming over any minute. How can I keep my mind on anything? Well, you've got to settle this thing before they get here. <sighs> oh, all right. <laughs> How can you lie like that, you little monster? I ain't lying. You told me to sign a report card myself. Why, I never do a thing like that. But you It's were... ridiculous. Oh, no, it ain't ridiculous. You were busy with the dinner for the Weemishes, and you told me to sign it myself. You did. You did. Don't tell me that. I remember no such thing, and I have a memory like an elephant. <laughs> I never forget a thing, do you hear? Not a thing. Now, where were we? <laughs> oh, yes. Now, why did you play hooky today? It was the report card. Oh, yes, the report card. Yeah. Well, where did you lose it? I mean, I mean, why did you sign it? But you told me to. Snooks, you're lying. I'd never do such a thing. Well, you did, and I ain't lying. You are. No. And if you don't admit it and promise to tell only the truth, you're not getting any of the wonderful dinner we're having for the Weemishes. Now, look, it's not so terrible as long as you admit it. All of us lie now and then. I've lied. I even remember once when your mommy lied. When was that? When she told me someday I'd have a child. <laughs> <laughs> the point is, unless you admit a lie, you'll go on lying. And then it'll become a disease, just like chicken pox or the measles. You mean I'll break out in fibs? <laughs> No. I mean, it'll get you into trouble. Now, look, maybe I can explain this better with a story. It's about a little girl who started out just like you. Mm -hmm. Signing her daddy's name to her report card and then lying about it. She wound up in a prison. What's her name? She doesn't have a name. She has a number. 6714359928. That's pretty long to remember. Doesn't she have a... A Nick number? <laughs> no. I want her to have a Nick number. Oh, stop. <laughs> I want her to have a Nick number. <laughs> All right. 
We'll call her Six for short. <laughs> now, let me get on with the story. When number six was a little girl, she got away with forging her father's name mm -hmm. to her report card. From that, she went to forging checks. Then she met a man who was also a liar and a criminal. What was his name? We'll call him Eight. When Eight and Six met, do you know what happened? Fourteen. <laughs> no. They became a pair of thieves operating as a team. Finally, they got caught robbing a bank. He's in jail for life, and she's still got ten years to serve. Do you want this to happen to you? It can't happen to me. And why not? Because I didn't lie in the first place. Well, that does it. You're going to admit you lied and promise to tell the truth hereafter if I have to spank it out of you. But I haven't been lying. Oh, you're still putting up an argument, eh? Mm. All right, take that. <laughs> now you're going to promise. <laughs> I promise. I promise. I'll just tell the truth hereafter. That's better. Now get washed up and come down for dinner with the wee missus. And don't be long. I'll get even with him. They're simply wonderful, Mr. Wilson. I'm like a new woman. I can't believe it. No Hey, I... hey, hey, wait a minute. What's wonderful? Wonderful, wonderful Tums, of course. <laughs> Thanks to Tums, I've said goodbye to sleepless nights from acid indigestion. I just take a couple of Tums at bedtime and it... And drift off to dreamland pronto. Yes, Tums settle and soothe, athos, upset stomach almost instantly. Relieve heartburn, ease over acid distress away. So you can enjoy eight hours of natural sleep every night, thanks to Tums. Natural sleep that peps you up as only natural sleep can. The natural sleep that follows Tums. I love Tums for their convenience, too. You don't have to measure, mix, or stir anything. Just eat those good Tums like candy. And remember, friends, in spite of skyrocketing prices, you pay not one penny more for Tums. Tums are still only 10 cents a roll, three-roll package a quarter, and counters everywhere. Buy the big economy box. You get 12 10-cent rolls for only one dollar. Get T-U-M-S, Tums for the tummy this very night, and always keep Tums handy. <laughs> Well, Snooks is pretty mad at Daddy. Daddy falsely accused her of lying and even spanked her for it. But right now, everybody is busy making final preparations for the dinner Dad is giving his boss, Mr. Weemish, and Mrs. Weemish, who haven't as yet arrived. Oh, gosh, I hope everything goes all right, dear. Oh, don't worry, it will. Now, let's see. I'll sit on Mrs. Weemish's left hand, you sit on her right. Now, what'll we do with Snooks? I'll hold her legs down. <laughs> you stop. You'll sit over there next to your mummy. And for heaven's sakes, use your table manners. I don't want the Weemishes to think we've raised a little pig. <laughs> Thank heavens Uncle Louie won't be here. His manners are just ghastly. I think Uncle Louie is very polite at the dinner table. Oh, you do, eh? Yeah. Whenever you pass him something, he always tips his hat. <laughs> <laughs> You're not supposed to be wearing a hat in the house in the first place. And forget Uncle Louie. It's your manners I'm worried about. Oh, stop picking on the child, Lancelot. Well, I'm not going to be embarrassed in front of the Weemishes. Some of her eating habits are terrible. Snooks, I don't want to see you soaking up the gravy with the bread. Only a big, dirty pig does that. <laughs> but I like gravy. Well, that's too bad. Can I suck it up through a straw? <laughs> no. And another thing. I don't like your habit of standing up when you want something and reaching way out with your hand. You have a tongue, use it. <laughs> All right, but my hands are much longer. I mean, ask for what you want. Say, may I have the water, please? May I have the butter? May I have the roast beef? I thought we were having turkey. <laughs> All right, may I have the turkey? It ain't ready yet. Do you have to take everything so literally? Oh, Lancelot, please. Don't be so stern with her. She's promised to tell the truth from now on. You don't have to keep being angry with her. Oh, all right, all right. Gosh, I wonder what's keeping the Weemishes. Oh, it's probably Mrs. Weemish. The old sourpuss. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder how Weemish can stand it. 
<laughs> well, he's no prize himself. He looks like an old walrus. <laughs> <laughs> he does his best. <laughs> and after he's had some of your mother's dumplings, he'll probably sound like one. <laughs> meet in the first place? I don't know. But there's a rumor that they both belong to the same aftershave club. <laughs> oh, stop. Say, how old is Mrs. Weemish anyway? I don't know. To me, she looks like 120. Mm, she does, doesn't she? Of course, all those wrinkles don't help. What a face. She looks like a St. Bernard. <laughs> oh, gosh, when are they going to get... There they are now. Uh, Snooks, answer the door. Oh, hi, Daddy. And don't forget that this is a very important dinner for us. I want to make a real impression on the wee missus. I'll do everything just like you told me. Good. Now go answer the door. Well, dear, in a little while we'll be having dinner with the wee missus. And who knows? Maybe it'll mean the manager's job of the new plant. Oh, I'm sure it will, dear. <laughs> Vera, this turkey is just delicious. Oh, yes, it certainly is. Well, I'm so glad you like it. Mmm, this bread tastes so good, soaked in this wonderful gravy. <laughs> uh, Snooks, would you pass me another piece? All right, if you want to be a big, dirty pig. A big... <laughs> Why, Snooks? Well, that's what you said about people who soak up their bread in the gravy. <laughs> you know what I said. <laughs> oh, she misunderstood me, Mr. Weemish. Why, we always soak our bread in the gravy. I think I'll soak a piece myself. <laughs> yeah, well, then let's all do it. Vera, piece of bread to soak in the gravy. Love it, love it. <laughs> Mrs. Weemish, piece of bread to soak in your gravy. Uh, all right. Snooks? Not me. I'm no pig. <laughs> <laughs> Snooks, do you want to leave the table? Well, I'm just saying what you told me before. Forget it. Yes, yes, let's change the subject. Really, Mr. Weemish, it's wonderful having you and Mrs. Weemish over again. It's been so long. Oh, yes, indeed. Because it's not just business. I think a lot of you, Mr. Weemish. You do? Yes, sir. And so does Vera. Yeah, and they think you're an old walrus. <laughs> well, isn't that not... What? Snooks, how can you say such a thing? It's easy, I'm telling the truth like you say. Old walrus, eh? Well, I guess I know when I've been insulted. Coming, Martha? Oh, sit down, Harold. You are an old walrus. Uh, Besides, where's your sense of humor? Well, I don't like it. How'd you like it if they thought you were an old walrus? Oh, they don't think that she's an old walrus. Well, thank heavens for that. They think she's an old sourpuss. <laughs> what? Snooks. And you look over a hundred and twenty and you got a face like a St. Bernard. <laughs> oh, you've got a face like a St. Bernard. Well, I like that. Well, I like St. Bernard's too. <laughs> Do you ever carry a keg of brandy under your neck? <laughs> Mrs. Weemish, please, she doesn't know what she's saying. I do, too. You spanked me, so I promise to tell the truth. And that's just what I'm doing. <laughs> I've never been so insulted in my life. Oh, please, Mrs. Weemish, please. It's all a mistake, really. Well, Harold, don't just sit there. Do something serious. Uh, fire him. Fire him? Yes. But I haven't finished eating. <laughs> <laughs> Harold. Uh, mm. Can I have a few more potatoes first and then break off the relationship? Harold, do what I say. Oh, yes, have a few more potatoes, Mr. Weemish. Higgins! More cranberry sauce? Just a bit. You're fired! More stuffing? Spoonful, maybe. You're through! Never has my wife been insulted as she has here in your own home. And I won't stand for it, do you hear? I won't stand for it. Uh, pass the gravy. Well, certainly he was, sir. <laughs> won't you reconsider, Mr. Weemish? No, he won't reconsider. And, Harold, I'm not staying here another moment. Come home this instant. Oh, all right. Harold, you seem to be taking the fact that I've been insulted rather lightly. I am not. I'm coming. Yes, Higgins, I cannot tolerate such impertinence and behind-the-back disloyalty as you have directed against me and my wife. I'm absolutely furious with you and wish nothing further to do with you. Uh... Would you mind wrapping this up for my dog? Oh, no, that's weavish. And perhaps another piece of bread to soak in the gravy? Well, Harold! I... Uh, good day, Higgins. But, Mr. Weavish... Coming, Harold? Uh, yes, and uh, do you have a Tums, dear? Oh, 
Those dumplings. Uh-huh. <laughs> Here you are, Harold. Now, come on. Vera, I'm fired. Yeah, sure looks like it. You little monster, come here. I didn't do nothing. I just told the truth after I got spanked for lying. Yes, you told the truth all right, and this is what you're getting for it. <laughs> uh, what have you got to say to that? Make up your mind. <laughs> Uncle, you're supposed to be my friend. Now, put your legal mind to work and tell me how to get my job back. Oh, this is really funny, Higgy. You spank Snooks into promising to tell the truth, then she crosses you up and tells it at the wrong time. Yeah, you just can't trust that kid. Oh, the messes she gets me into. Sometimes I feel like quietly dropping her off a bridge. <laughs> Higgy, don't even talk that way. You couldn't do a thing like that. I know I couldn't. There isn't a bridge around here for miles. <laughs> You know, Higgy, sometimes you're a pretty preoccupied fellow. How do you know Snooks wasn't telling the truth about signing a report card in the first place? Maybe you told her to without realizing it. But I wouldn't be that absent-minded. Oh, are you kidding? I'll never forget the time Vera left you to take care of all the kids and also prepare dinner. They got you so nervous that you didn't know what you were doing. I don't remember that. Well, I do. When I came in, the roast beef was in the bookcase. And you were in the kitchen basting the latest book of the month club selection. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. You're mentioning dinner brings something back. Yeah? Yesterday, when I was busy planning the dinner for the Weemishes, Snooks did ask me for something. And I think I told her to do it herself. Good heavens, the kid wasn't lying. And this whole mess is of my own making. Now I'll never get out of it. Oh. Well, there is one thing you can try, but it'll mix things up even more. Well, what is it? I'll take Snooks to see Weemish and have her tell him that she was mad at you and everything she said was lies. But to do that, I have to ask her to lie. And right after spanking her for that very reason. Ironic, isn't it? But can you think of anything else? I'm going to hate myself, but what else can I do? See you later, Kunk. Oh, Mr. Weemish will see us in a minute. Will you please do what I ask, Snooks? I see. You want me to be a liar, huh? Honey, there's a difference between a bad lie and a good lie. Good lies are called white lies. They are? Yes. And the ones you're going to tell are white lies. Maybe. But I think that there's a little tattletail gray around the edges. Uh-huh. <laughs> Please, honey. I made up with you for spanking you, didn't I? I bent down and let you kick me as hard as you wanted, didn't I? Yeah. And I gave you a real good kick. Of course, I don't think it was very fair of you to put on ice skates first. <laughs> Please, honey, will you, will you do it? All right, but you're making a liar out of me. I know, and I'm ashamed. All right, come in, Higgins. Oh, yes, Mr. Weemish. Come on, Snooks. It's very nice of you to see me, Mr. Weemish. I was afraid maybe you wouldn't. Never mind that. What do you want? Well, uh, Snooks can explain. Go ahead, Snooks. Well, Daddy spanked me, and I wanted to get even with him. So everything I said was a lie, just lies. That's what you wanted Snooks to explain, Higgins? Yes, Mr. Weemish. Well, will you explain that to Mrs. Weemish and let me have my job back? Higgins, do you take me for an idiot? The things Snooks said couldn't be made up by a child. They were too natural. You and Vera said them all right. And you have the audacity and the lack of moral integrity to bring your child here and make her lie to get your job back. Hmm. For shame, Higgins. (laughs) I'm sorry, Mr. Weemish. However, I never had such a wonderful dinner or such a wonderful time in years. A wonderful time? Oh, oh, I couldn't show it. I'd be afraid to. But when Snooks called Martha a sourpuss and told her she looked like a St. Bernard, I could have died. (laughs) (laughs) I've been wanting to call her a St. Bernard for years. Oh, Higgins, I love you. (laughs) What about my job? Oh, take a week off. By the time you get back, Martha will have forgotten all about it. And Snooks? Yes, Mr. Weemish? I like you. You little monster. (laughs) And I like you, you old walrus. (laughs) See, Daddy, it always pays to tell the truth. 
hospital. Yes, Snooks. And I promise I'll never lie again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, hello, Snooks. Hi, Mr. Wilson. Oh, where are you going? Oh, to the ice cream parlor. See, I got 40 cents. Where did you get that much money? Well, I said a naughty word, and my mommy gave me a dime not to say it again. Well, where'd you get the other 30 cents? Ah, uh, I lost my place. There <laughs> <laughs> it is, I got it. I learned three new words. <laughs> Well, even though you got lost, it still sounds like a profitable business. Yeah, and you got some naughty weights for me? I'll split with you. <laughs> well, I'm afraid not, Snooks, but better not let your daddy hear you using naughty words. Well, where do you think I learned them? You can hear him when he gets mad. Never mind, Snooks. <laughs> Probably your daddy's worry nerve that's bothering. Everybody has one, you know. And when hurry and worry starts it acting up, it immediately starts your stomach pumping acid. Then comes acid indigestion, heartburn, and all the miserable distress of acid upset stomach. That's why it's so wise to always keep Tums handy. At the first hint of acid indigestion, eat a couple of Tums like candy. See how quickly Tums soothe away your distress. Make you feel fine again in no time. Get T-U-M-S. Tums for the tummy right away. Still, only ten cents a roll, three roll package a quarter everywhere. Now, here's Snooks again. Well, Snooks, things turned out pretty lucky after all. But I certainly learned my lesson. Next time, I'll think twice before I disbelieve you. I'm glad, because Robespierre just had an accident. And it ain't my fault. Robespierre? Accident? What happened? He took his hard nose and slammed it into my poor little fist. <laughs> oh, I see. It was really his fault. Yeah, and then he did something even worse to me. Oh, you poor kid. What yeah. did he do? He took the seat of his pants and kicked me in the little toe. <laughs> and none of this is your fault, eh? No. Nope. Oh, good night, Nellie. Good night, Sam. <laughs> and good night, everybody. Friends, when you need a laxative, don't take harsh-acting drugs or phenyl derivatives. There's a wonderful all-vegetable laxative that's unbelievably gentle, thoroughly dependable. It's nature's remedy, better known as NR tablets. Because NR tablets are all-vegetable, they're mild-acting yet effective, leave you feeling grand. All-vegetable is the secret. Get a 25-cent box of NR tablets, plain or candy-coated, the all-vegetable laxative. Money back if not delighted. Remember, NR tonight, tomorrow, all right. The Baby Snook Show came to you from Hollywood and was produced by Arthur Stander and written by Sid Dorfman and Arthur Stander. Also appearing in the cast were Arlene Harris as Mummy, Frank Nelson, L.V. Allman, Ken Christie, and Vivi Janice. Don't forget to listen to The Baby Snook Show every Tuesday at the same time. This is Don Wilson reminding you that night and day at home or away, always carry Tums. T-U-M-S. Tums for the tummy. Jerry Colonna and Bob Hope are together again on NBC. Well, here we are again at the end of another show, and it was so great to be with all of you today. I have such a great time with you and hope this puts a laugh in your day and makes your weekend a great one and sends you off into your week feeling lighter and happier. We all need that right now. I hope I can help with that during your day. And if you ever get depressed or you're feeling down or bad about your life or your job or whatever it may be, just remember this. You could be working as Sammy the Banana Slug or Artie the Artichoke or even the Fighting Pickle. And although it might be kind of fun to be, you know, keg Keggy the Keg, see, doesn't that make you feel better? <laughs> okay, thanks again for joining me today on the show. And join us every Friday for another laugh and old radio. Check us out on YouTube as well so you can see some of the mascots that I was talking about today. And please subscribe there. And as always, listen on your favorite podcast station. Uh, have a great week, everyone. This is Jay Lewis, Off the Air.